okay, I'm back. So last time you saw him spam him, he's grabbing Nico Robin, he's dragging him forward. The gates of justice are opening up, and you see this dude Sanji. Sanji's got the cigarette in his mouth, just smoking, looking straight. Gee, and Sanji says some of the most beautiful shit. And we're seeing yet again a sign where a Straw Hat team member could actually be a captain in his own right because he says, and every, what is it? And even the worst circumstances lies opportunity. And that's when he proceeds to tell uh, Nami, he refers to Usopp as Usopp. So no more Sniper King. But he tells them that I'll do what you couldn't. That's fine. Everyone has limits of stuff that they can't do. But you'll do what I can't do. And he allows them to read, the, read into the situation, fill in the blanks themselves. <clears throat> but I like how that was Sanji bringing up their morale. That's that call to action. While also letting them know how grim the situation really is. And I like how he tells them, like, once we go past the gates of justice, you have the, the sea Neptunians in there. You have the prison. You have the Navy headquarters. There's nothing that can be done. Robin will be past our reach. Get your shit together. I'm paraphrasing that last part. But I like how Sanji just laid everything out there. And that's when Nami and Usopp, they rise to action at this point. And with the rest of this chapter, okay? Yeah, you had your funny moments where the little girl's painting the arrows. And I don't know if that's actually going to help them actually... You know, find their way, but at the same time, you have the situation where you got Luffy, he's kind of squaring off with uh, Rob Lucci. There's a brief panel of that. You got Nico Robin being dragged to the gates of justice against her will, and I love the fact that she is trying to escape. It shows that her will to live is there. And then you got Zoro, he's continuing to fight Kaku. So the stakes are raising. You see everyone saying the sea train is full. What the hell are we going to do? Bring in another ship. We have to get out of here. There's some fighting going on with Polly and the Frankie family where they're saying, I knew you are just pretending to be tied up on the ropes. Looks like Polly has something else playing because he's tying those knots. So that's interesting to see what Polly has going on. But this dude, Sanji, the way that he's fighting Jabra, Beautiful. I like how he raises his leg and takes on the full force of uh, one of Jabra's attacks, gets blown back, and Sanji, just like Luffy, just keeps bounding back. But there's a moment where Sanji goes on the offensive, and he's laying out all these attacks, and Jabra, he's just taking them because one of his six powers is he has the ability to harden his body like iron. And Sanji even says... This is getting really fucking annoying, right? And I like the fact that, you know, Sanji took that stance. But another thing that I really enjoyed about this is the fact that as Sanji is throwing out all these attacks, he's not giving up. He's doing the same thing Luffy did with Rob Lucci. But the difference is that Sanji's working towards an end game. And exactly what happens is, is Jabra says, oh, it's okay. Nico Robin, yeah, she's my little sister. You take the key. Sanji bends over, and that's when he says, I'm getting tired of your tricks. Have you not heard about the boy who cried wolf? That's when Sanji just kicks this dude right under the chin and up into the ceiling. But what I like about Sanji's fight and the reason why Sanji, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, Nami. You know, this dude Sanji, this dude Sanji might take you as my favorite character. I just had to let you know. Because this dude, Sanji, has the fucking cigarette in his mouth the whole time. Like, he's jumping around and taking drags on a cigarette the whole fucking fight. Like, all I need is for Sanji to finish and go... And flick the cigarette on this dude's body. And Sanji's my favorite fucking character, man. So, this was a good chapter. You know, Oda's continuing to raise the stakes. You know, the fights... I'm willing to bet when Toei animates this because Toei goes at such horrid pacing. Like, holy fuck. Again, I, I use the only other Toei animation series that I watched and I had a direct investment like you guys did was with Dragon Ball. 520 manga chapters. And Toei Animation managed to make like 600 or let's see, the 300 and 
about 600 fucking episodes between Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. But the manga was 520 fucking chapters. I wouldn't be surprised if when One Piece ends, there's more One Piece episodes than there are manga chapters. So, but they go at such a slow-ass pace. And this is one of the few times I would be okay with them dragging out this fight and maybe adding filler to it. Because this was such a fun fight to read, man. My chapter question to you guys is, what did you think about Sanji telling Usopp there are things that I can do that you can't. There are things that you can't do that I can. But that's okay. Usopp, I need your help. He doesn't refer to him as Sniper King or Soga King. He refers to him as Usopp. What were your thoughts on that? Do you think this was Sanji letting Usopp know? It's okay. You don't have to wear a mask. You're part of our crew. We take you as you are. But... As always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, share. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. Have an awesome day.